Even if you can't shape your life the way you want, at least try as much as you can not to degrade it by too much contact with the world, by too much activity and talk. Do not degrade it by dragging it along, taking it around, exposing it so often to the daily silliness of social relations and parties, until it comes to seem a boring hanger-on. Happy the man whose wish and care a few paternal acres bound, content to breathe his native air in his own ground, whose herds with milk, whose fields with bread, whose flocks supply him with attire, whose trees in summer yield him shade, in winter fire, blessed who can unconcernedly find hours, days and years slide soft away. In health of body, peace of mind, quiet by day. Sound sleep by night, study and ease together mixed. Sweet recreation and innocence which most does please with meditation. Thus let me live, unseen, unknown. Thus unlamented let me die. Steal from the world and not a stone. Tell where I lie.
It's an evening in late March, and in the kitchen, I'm listening to a short piece of choral music when my son comes in to fetch himself a bowl of cereal, which, he tells me, helps with his revision. And another thing he goes on, I shouldn't worry about him because he's going to be fine. Exams, work, life, everything's going to be fine. That's a relief, I say to myself. Thanks. Now I can listen to this music, which turns out to be just some fancy noise. Nothing compared with a boy's cheerfulness. the gladness of living, put his keys on the table, put flowers in a copper bowl there, put his eggs and milk on the table, he put there the light that came in through the window, sounds of a bicycle, sound of a spinning wheel, the softness of bread and weather he put there. On the table the man put things that happened in his life, what he wanted to do with his life, he put that there, those he loved, those he didn't love. The man put them on the table too. Three times three makes nine. He was next to the window, next to the sky. He reached out and placed on the table endlessness. So many days he'd wanted to drink a beer. He put on the table the pouring of the beer. He placed there his sleep and his wakefulness, his hunger and his fullness he placed there. Now that's what I call a table. It didn't complain at all about the load. It wobbled once or twice. And then stood firm. The man kept piling things on.
I wandered, lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze, continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For off. When on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodil. Wherever I am, there's always poo. There's always poo in me. Whatever I do, he wants to do. Where are you going today? Says Pooh. Well, that's very odd, because I was too. Let's go together, says Pooh, says he. Let's go together, says Pooh. What's twice eleven? I said to Pooh. Twice what? Said Pooh to me. I think it ought to be twenty-two. Just what I think myself, said Pooh. It wasn't an easy sum to do, but that's what it is, said Pooh, said he. That's what it is, said Pooh. Let's look for dragons. I said to Pooh. Yes, let's, said Pooh to me. We crossed the river and found a few. Yes, those are dragons, all right, said Pooh. As soon as I saw their beaks, I knew that's what they are, said Pooh, said he. That's what they are, said Pooh. 
Cats frighten the dragons, I said to Pooh. That's right, said Pooh to me. I'm not afraid, I said to Pooh, and I held his paw. And I shouted, shoo, silly old dragons, and off they flew. I wasn't afraid, said Pooh, said he. I'm never afraid with you. So wherever I am, there's always Pooh. There's always Pooh and me. What would I do, I said to Pooh, if it wasn't for you? And Pooh said, true, it wasn't much fun for one, but two can stick together, says Pooh, says he. That's so it is, says Pooh. Vegan Phil and Veggie Bill and Rory Piscatori all love their Sunday lunch at Mum's and thereby hangs a story. Pete loves meat, via pie, while Laura's omnivory. The man next door, he just wants more. But that's another story. Joe hates game, Flo feels the same, Ange says, I'll snack. Tim celiac on alternate weeks, Lou loathes leeks. The sight of lamb for Uncle Sam is akin to eating a kitten. While Mr. Smuts loves plenty of nuts, though by pulse he's also quite smitten. Cousin Phoebe thinks it greedy to have anything that isn't, well, seedy. While Charlie Reese, who always agrees, raves about anything cooked in grease, especially the bacon just bitten. So Sunday lunch was a nightmare at 21 High Street. Mum tore her hair in rare despair. What to give them to eat? But come lockdown, she dispensed with her frown and cooked up a plan with husband Stan, and it went like this. And for her, it was bliss. Each stay in your room, and we'll all eat via Zoom. You'll have what you want, be it fish or croissant, cause you'll shop and you'll cook and let me off the hook. And the man next door will always have more, for him I adore, cause he empties his plate, be it cabbage or skate, and he's never late to the table, nor picky, like Mabel. So on Sunday they all had an absolute ball and they treated themselves and finished it all and they laughed and they sang and they teased and they loved and the washing up took just five minutes apiece so they'd time for more laughter from grand to great niece and happiness reigned in that house in High Street because everyone ate what they wanted to eat and Mum and her Stan put their feet up as planned and Grand joined in the song loud as anyone can and Luke played his flute and his drum kit to boot though nobody taught them quite how to unmute. That Sunday when everyone stayed in their room and stuffed themselves silly thanks to laptops and Zoom and all came together in laughter and joy while staying apart so as not to annoy those who were ready to play politics and spy on each other with a new rule of six. That Sunday when everyone stayed in their room and saved mum from the crowd thanks to laptops and Zoom. If we come together We can mend a crack in the sky. If we come together, we can mend a crack in the sky.
When this is over, may we never again take for granted a handshake with a stranger. Full shelves at the store. Conversations with neighbours. A crowded theatre. Friday night out. The taste of communion. A routine checkup. The school rush each morning. Coffee with a friend. The stadium roaring. Each deep breath. A boring Tuesday. Life itself. When this ends, may we find that we have become more like the people we wanted to be. We were called to be. We hoped to be. And may we stay that way, better for each other, because of the worst.